Though I know to talk of any business, especially of money, is a theme not quite so entertaining to you as that of the ladies, my necessities are such, I hope you'll have patience to hear me. The greatness of your necessities, Tan, is the worst argument in the world for your being patiently heard. I do believe you are going to make me a very good speech, but strike me down. It has the worst beginning of any speech I have heard this twelve month. Why then? My case, in a word, is this. The necessary expenses of my travels have so much exceeded the wretched income of my annuity that I have been forced to mortgage it for 500 pounds, which is spent. Why, do you then really think it a reasonable thing I should lend you 500 pounds? I do not ask it as a due, brother. I am willing to receive it as a favor. Thou art willing to receive it anyhow, strike me speechless. But these are damn times to give money in. Repairs are so exorbitant. Tenants such rogues. And periwigs so dear that the devil take me, I am reduced to that extremity in my cash that I have been forced to retrench in that one article of sweet pardon till I have pratted down to five guineas a month. Now judge, Tam, if I can lend you five hundred pounds. Wounds! If you can't live upon five thousand a year, how do you think I should do it upon two hundred? Don't be in a passion, Tam. For passion is the most unbecoming thing in the world. To the face. Look you, I don't love to say anything to you to make you melancholy. But upon this occasion, I must take leave to put you in mind that a running horse does require more attendance than a coach horse. Nature has made some difference twixt you and me. Yes, she has made you older. But that is not all. Is there else? Ask the ladies why thou essence bottle, thou musk cat, dost thou then think thou hast any advantage over me but what fortune has given thee? I do stab my vitals. Now, by all that's great and powerful, thou art the Prince of Coxcombs! Sir, I am proud at being at the head of so prevailing a party. Will nothing then provoke thee? Draw, coward! Look, you Tam, you know I have always taken you for a mighty dull fellow, and here is one of the most foolishest plats I have seen broke out in a long time. Your poverty makes your life so burdensome to you that you would provoke me to a quarrel. In hopes either to slip through my lungs into my estate, or to get yourself run through the guts to put an end to your pain. But I will disappoint you in both your designs. Far, with the temper of a philosopher, I will go to the play with my sword 
in my scabbard. So. Farewell then, snuff box. And now, conscience, I defy thee.